Hello guys, welcome back to Red Hot TV. Amechi, as well as his representatives, in face of over $33 billion Chinese loan. There was heated argument at the House of Representatives hearing room 028 yesterday between Minister of Transportation Rotimi Amechi and House Committee Chairman on Treaties, Particulars and Agreements, Osai Nicholas. It was during the legislative hearing on the loans agreement signed by the ministry, the issue being that an alleged $33 billion loan which Osai said Nigeria had signed, but the minister denied any such agreement. The drama unfolded before Minister of Works and Housing Babatunde Fashola and the Minister of Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Mohamed Bello. Amechi, who had warned the committee against scrutinizing the Chinese loans, repeated his position that Nigeria might lose the opportunity of a loan to fund the Lagos Calabar Coastal Rail Line, and the people of South South will be denied that project because of the committee you set up to investigate Chinese loans. Osai frowned at the misconception and misgivings on the, on the legislative scrutiny of various agreements signed by government officials. He said, we have heard some people ask why we are focusing on only Chinese-related loans and commercial contracts. We would like Nigerians to know that we aren't focusing on only Chinese loans. For what we know, Nigeria has over 500 bilateral loan and commercial contract agreements and investment charities with different countries and institutions. There is no way the committee would do a thorough job without segmenting the issues based on countries institutions and MDAs. Thus, it must be clearly noted that this is not targeted at only China, neither was it designed to impede the development of the railway sector and other infrastructures, but rather to ensure full disclosure, transparency, accountability, utmost good faith and value for money in both the bilateral loans and commercial contracts agreements entered into by the Nigerian government. The loan agreement we've seen so far shows that, that government officials charged with the responsibility of re representing Nigeria were more desperate to just take the loans at any condition, possibly using non-negotiated loan agreement templates rather than go through the rigor of diligent technical review of negotiating specific clauses with clarity and for national interest. For instance, it is a common practice that most international loan agreements would adopt sovereign guarantee, in quotes, and a neutral international arbitration center as opposed to waiving of our national sovereignty in an omnibus manner. Especially in dealing with countries like China, known to possess an absolute state status on their institutions and corporations. However, the immunity clauses in most of these agreements before us are not only ambiguous but very obscure, and without recourse to the fact that Nigerian government had issued circular on the subject matter with preference number SGF OP S.3 X1737, dated 11th August 2014, that provided guidelines on issues of waiver of sovereign immunity clause during loan and commercial agreement negotiations. We expected government officials negotiating and signing these loans to fully comply with this guideline and also ensure that the clauses are coached to clearly reflect the same. Questioning the rationale behind accepting Hong Kong as arbitration center for the Chinese loans secured by Nigeria, he said, Arbitration centers for bilateral loan agreements are known to be generally on neutral grounds, unlike what we have in most of Nigeria slash China agreement, where Hong Kong that is also governed by China laws was designated as the arbitration center. From our experience, the MDAs sign these commercial agreements in billions of dollars, then go to the President and Federal Executive Council for approval to execute including securing loan facilities through Ministry of Finance and Debt Management Office, DMO and then proceed to negotiate the terms of these loans before coming back to Mr. President, who then writes the National Assembly asking for approval for billions of dollars to do projects without attaching the negotiated loan and commercial contract agreement details. This approach 
is the reason we have government representatives signing empty pages of loan agreement repayment schedule and other key documents required for the loan agreements to become effective. We have commercial contracts signed in US dollars. While the loan agreement for the execution of the same contract was signed in Chinese Yuan Currency in Ministry of Communications and Digital Economics slash Galaxy Backbone Limited. We have noticed from documents available to us that commercial contracts signed by Federal Ministry of Transportation alone is over $33 billion without any clear cut financing agreements. Most of these commercial ag contract agreements didn't also have local content clauses and more witnessed by non properly designated and authorized officials. There are observable, observable issues relating to procurement process, evidence of 15% advance payments, payment of management fees, drawn down, drawdown process and remittances, and a whole lot of other matters which we are strongly poised to ask questions on and hope to get honest answers that will fine-tune the current process plan for possible re rene renegotiation of some other agreements in order to serve Nigerians better. While dismissing the claim of an existing $33 billion contract signed by the Ministry, Amici demanded evidence of the contract from the committee. He said, Mr. Chairman, if you say that the ministry has awarded a contract of $33 billion, we would want to see it because the only contract Ministry of Transportation has awarded so far is $1.6 billion for Lagos Ibadan Railway project. The implication of having a $33 billion contract is that we will be able to have a large number of workers. There is no $33 billion contract in the Ministry of Contracts. What we have is $1.6 billion contracts awarded under President Buhari and $800 million contract awarded under President Goodluck Jonathan. By the time the contract signed under President Jonathan had been completed, 8% and so we didn't have to do anything about local content or no local content. The only one we had to deal with, the issue of local content, which is the only contract we have for now, is the $1.6 billion contract awarded from Lagos to Ibadan, of which the Chinese government is providing $1.2, and we are providing the remaining $400 million. There are over 20,000 workers on that project, with only 560 of them being Chinese. We need to begin to say the truth to Nigerians. Amici told the committee that Lagos Ibadan rail line would not be possible because the house is probing the loan which has not been secured for the project. Adding that at the time there is no contract because there was no loan. However, as the interaction began to degenerate into an altercation between the minister and the chairman of the committee, the speaker walked in unannounced and asked that the hearing be adjourned for 10 minutes. Osai demanded comprehensive explanation from the minister on the various notes taken by the government, insisting that it was immaterial whether the loan was taken by the APC government or the PDP government adding that what was important was that the interest of Nigeria and future generation of Nigerians was at stake. The following discussion took place, a lot of discussions. Okay, Osai said you submitted an addendum section 16b subsection 1 under the loan content obligation stating that the contractor held, developed and submitted to the employer, Ministry of Transport, for its approval, a local content plan for training and engagement of Nigeria labor plan in all aspects of the contractor work. Can you provide the committee the certified copies of the labor plan, training carried out, and the beneficiaries and evidence of the number of Nigerians working in all aspects of this project and their Chinese counterpart as provided in that document? So I actually replied saying, I will give a slight response to your speech and then my response. The slight response is to say that we try to be more patriotic than we have been. Okay. Committee member said, point of order, Mr. Chairman, while Osai gave him the right to speak. So Amechi countered and saying, no, sir, that he doesn't have a, that he himself has a right to speak. You have invited me, okay, this is Amechi speaking. You have invited me and I have a right to speak. I was once a member of the house, and so I have the right to talk. So Osai asked him, can you speak to the questions I asked you now? Amechi said, it is either you allow me to speak or I stop. Osai said, I'm in charge here and I'll observe 
and I'll observe you when the need arises. The minister is speaking and I will not observe any other member. Let the minister finish his speech and I will give you room to talk. And so Amitya later explained himself everything that was asked of him. Okay. Then Amitya said, um, since you approached me, I will tell you where this is coming from. Okay. And a lot of um, controversies, a lot of questions, a lot of reaction, a lot of comments concerning this news. Oh, wow. So a lot of people are actually seeing, finding it difficult to believe Amitya or not. Because politicians to them would definitely be the same. Okay, guys, let's hear your comments. Let's get your own reaction concerning this. You can drop it in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe and like this channel. Thank you.